Hey, welcome to Electron Online, and here's the next stage of how to get the general concept of simple harmonic motion under control. Here we uh, have the equation, the differential equation that we found on our first video. Now what we're going to do is solve that general equation for simple harmonic motion. And again, just to keep in mind that um, x double dot right here is the same thing as writing. This is the second derivative with respect to time of position like that. So that means the same thing. So we're solving the differential equation. Another thing we're going to do is make a substitution for the quantity k over m. We're, we're going to call omega equal to the square root of k over m. Now what does omega stand for? Now remember this is simple harmonic motion. There's a certain frequency of oscillation. Omega is the angular frequency. That's the number of radians per second. And the actual frequency, we can say that omega is equal to 2 pi f. But in other words, f is equal to omega divided by 2 pi. So this would be the oscillatory frequency in cycles per second. That's how omega is related to the quantity k and m. Remember that k is the spring constant of the spring. It's the number of newtons you have to apply to the spring to expand it one meter. So it's newtons per meter, the general units there. And m is the mass in kilograms. Now, when we look at that equation, you may not right away see the obvious solution, but it turns out the obvious solution is equal to, equal to the sine or the cosine of omega. But in other words, if we take something like this, if we say that if x is equal to, uh, let's say, a times the cosine of omega t, so if we let x equal this, if we now take the first derivative of this with respect to time, let's see what we get. So dx dt, which can be written as x dot, is equal to the derivative of that. Now the derivative of the sine is a cosine and the derivative of the cosine is the negative sine. So that would be minus a times the sine of omega t times the derivative of the angle which is omega. So this would become x dot is equal to minus a omega times the sine of omega t. If we now take the derivative again a second time, look what we get. So the second derivative of x with respect to time is therefore equal to x double dot, which is the derivative of this, which would be equal to minus a omega times the sine, oh, not the sine, because if I take the derivative of sine, I get the cosine, cosine of omega t times the derivative of the angle, which is omega, and so this becomes minus a omega squared cosine of omega t. Yeah. Notice that a cosine of omega t is here again, a cosine of omega t. The only difference is we have a minus omega squared. So this becomes equal to minus omega squared times the quantity a times the cosine of omega t. And notice that a times the cosine of omega t is equal to x. So this can be written as minus omega squared x. That's really interesting because now let's take a look and see what we have over there. If we let k over m be equal or the square root of k over m be equal to omega, then omega squared would be equal to k over m. So this can be written as 0 is equal to x double dot plus omega square x. So then if I replace x double dot, which is what I have right here, x double dot, if I replace that by minus omega square x, I get the following. So 0 equals minus omega square x. I still have the plus omega square x. And sure enough, we get 0 equals 0, which shows that this is a solution to my, um, to my differential equation. Now, that's not the only solution, because I could have also used the sine of omega t, or a times the sine of omega t. Or, for example, I could have said this, x is equal to b just to use a different variable, b times the sine of omega t. I could have gone to the very same logic and again gotten 0 equals 0, which then means the general solution is simply the sum of these two. So I can say, therefore, x, which is a function of time, is simply equal to the sum of these two possible solutions, which is a times the cosine of omega t plus b times the sine of omega t. So that therefore becomes a general solution to this differential equation. Now, I know what you're saying. Well, wasn't he going to do something with damping? Yes, that will come later in a few more videos. I just want to make sure that you understand the general concept of simple harmonic motion and how to set it up in the differential equation format because then we're just going to adapt that to the case with damping factor. 
Now, what we'll find here is that we can actually simplify this to a single trigonometric function. We can simply say that this can be written. Uh, therefore, we can say that x is a function of time is equal to, um, if we add these two together, there's actually a trigonometric identity that says that this is equal to the square root of a squared plus b squared times the cosine of omega t, and that's a, not a very good looking omega, omega t plus or minus, I'll just use minus, some phase angle. And the phase angle phi can be found by simply saying that the, uh, the tangent of phi, which is equal to, of course, the sine of phi divided by the cosine of phi, is simply equal to b over a. So that's the relationship between the phase angle and the values of a and b, because a and b could have different amplitudes. So what that means then is the general equation becomes x as a function of time is equal to some value, c, which will rep represent the oscillation of the motion, the amplitude of the oscillation, times the cosine of omega t minus phi. And it could be plus or minus phi, it doesn't matter. And so this is now going to become the general equation for oscillatory motion without damping as the solution to the differential equation. Sometimes they bypass this step and they simply say, look, either the cosine or the sine could have solved that equation, so therefore we could simply say, uh, we can write there a times the cosine of omega t or b times the sine of omega t without the phase angle. Although, however, you always do need the phase angle because you're not sure where the motion starts. You don't know if the motion starts at the equilibrium point or above or below, so there's going to be always some phase angle that you want to include in that. And typically, instead of using c as the constant, we usually use a for the amplitude. Now, there's a little confusion here. Well, I used a there before, but just think of a and b as some general constants. In this case, we're going to replace c by a because a is now going to represent the maximum amplitude. So let's say that this is the maximum amplitude. So this would be x max, which now becomes the amplitude of the motion. And so we're going to use that amplitude instead of the c. So we can say that x as a function of time is equal to the amplitude of the oscillation times either the sine or the cosine, it doesn't really matter which function you use, cosine of omega t uh, minus some phase angle to represent the, any starting point that you may have. So that's the general approach to the solution of the differential equation representing the oscillatory motion of simple harmonic motion. Now we're going to take that equation expanded to where we use a damping factor in there and see how that changes the overall solution. So if you're interested in this, stay tuned and we'll continue with this.